Last month, I recorded a video that had been highly requested where I ranked my 25 Calathea species and cultivars from what I thought were the easiest to the most difficult to care for. And I said this about my Calathea dotty. Flowered this year pretty heavily, and I, uh, in hindsight, will not allow this dotty to flower again. If you follow me on Instagram, then you already know that I am a Calathea hypocrite. I uh, want to talk to you today about Calathea flowering. I get a lot of questions about this. What do I think about it? What do I do about it? And you're gonna find that what I've said I'm going to do versus what I actually do, not always the same. So let's talk a little bit about flowering in Calathea, at least in my home, what I think triggers it, and apparently what I really will do about it. So about a week, as I said, after my larger kind of quasi collection, my ranking, you know, easy to difficult Calatheas. I was over here hanging out with my medallion, checking it out. I do that with all of my plants quite often, multiple times a week, and I found this. Oh, look at this. And it already had a flower coming out. So this Calathea medallion had a, it had a spider mite infestation, I sprayed it down outside with a hose with tap water, burned it up pretty good, uh, really just, I mean, hosed it down. And look, now it's gonna flower a few months later. I don't understand, I don't understand. It's got a ton of new foliage. It hasn't stopped the foliage. The plant is just thriving. You, if you see all of the darkness down there on the top of the soil, concentrated, uh, toward the center of the pot, the worm castings. Uh, that's what this is getting. And I'll get into what I give these plants um, and what I think may trigger some of this. Uh, but this is August 1st, so this is about a week after that initial video that I took. And you can see here that a lot of flowers have come up, dried up, and browned up, and here they are. Uh, so the thing is that a lot of my Calathea, they just, they seem, my plants in general seem very passive. I give them everything they need from light, water, air circulation, uh, food, everything. And then I am reminded, you know, that they're not passive. And I also realize that my medallion isn't alone. Other Calathea are flowering, including my Picturata argentea. Now, this also went through this was actually ground zero for a spider mite infestation toward the beginning of 2020. And this last bloomed December, 2019 and January, 2020, which was really strange. Um, and then I also realized that my margarita is blooming as well. And this plant hasn't been through the trauma that the other two did. The picture out of Argentina went through fungal bacterial issues, a spider mites over and over again until I did the soil drench. And so, you can see that beautiful brown at the center of the leaf, which makes it rather distinct, and that beautiful, what appears to be pink-tipped flower coming in. Five days later from that last, those last set of videos, I go in, I look, my medallion still putting up foliage, still looking good. I'm not seeing any issues with the plant. And again, you know, I usually consider my plants to be very passive, and I guess this does remind me how autonomous they are. They know what is good for them and they know what to do and i i don't i don't have that kind of expertise about them that they do so i don't feel comfortable you know literally nipping it in the bud and getting rid of these so you can see how quickly the flowers though do grow and bloom so here we've got a bloom on the picturata argentia that's emerged nothing to write home about right they're not huge beautiful flowers they're rather small and you know, this is the next day. They literally last about 12 hours. I would say they don't even last 24 hours in my house at least. So I do tend to pull them out. They, these little areas can get clogged up. I don't like dead decaying matter around my plants uh, just because I don't want it to attract any unwanted pests. So I do tend to remove them. But by this time on August 7th, I'm really not bothered so much this margarita looks beautiful and that pink that's on the tip of the flower i notice is on the base of a lot of the different kind of um growth that's emerging and you know i i don't notice any of the foliage dropping away and as a matter of fact you'll see in a minute that this margarita is growing some new you know it's actually developed a new rhizome and it's pushing up new growth 
Here you can see more blooms on the Picturata argentea, but again, this plant went through a fungal infection recently. It went through a bacterial infection. I hosed this plant down numerous times outside. Um, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I, I really decided I wasn't gonna let my Picturata argentea go, and I did everything I could to get rid of the spider mites that just were ravaging it, you know, week after week. Now, here is this absolutely gorgeous flower, and you know, I like I said, I feel like the plant knows what it needs to do, and it doesn't need my help determining that, so I guess I have found out my comfort level. Um, I've said very confidently on my dotty I'd get rid of any new flower. I don't think I can do it. You can see here it's actually pushing up a whole new flower that's going to be coming up, and back there in the top left, you can see that, that spike that's rising out of the soil. Well, so let's go back in time. What do I think to help trigger this? Well, let's discuss it. Uh, this is me mixing up a fish-based emulsion, a fertilizer. I get so many questions about this. If you watch the channeling, you know I only have been using historically in the last uh, year or so worm castings because calathea are highly sensitive and they you know, get fertilizer burn very easily. And so you can see here that I'm prepping my margarita. I'm gonna go ahead and give it some new fertilizer. I'm gonna use a fish-based emulsion. And so what got what when it comes to who's flowering? Some got fish-based liquid emulsion fertilizer and some just got worm castings. I do worm castings uh, on my plants in the growing season about once a month and I do that through top dressing so about a half inch layer of worm castings in a pot like you saw on the medallion. As for light, these plants only got either east or north facing window light and so in the east they get some direct morning light but honestly that's rather mild especially through my energy efficient windows meant to protect my house from sun rays. So, on the medallion, this only got worm castings. It didn't get any of that fish based emulsion that you saw me mixing up. And as for light, the east facing window. Now this medallion is very close to the window. And so that means that it does get those direct morning rays and it's really close to the window. And so by the way, was my Calathea dotty, which also bloomed recently. So I think light, of course, as we know, is important for growth, but also when it comes to calatheas for flowering. And when I've had calatheas that are further away from windows, like I said, I've changed my idea about them being low light plants because they do best and put out the most growth and do things like flower when they're getting a bit more light. But don't go burning your calathea just because I said that, be careful. Now the margarita got worm castings, as everyone did also got fish fertilizers. You saw I poured some in there. Now this is in an east facing window, but it's not getting that direct morning light. It is pulled back a bit. It might get a little bit on the tips of some of its leaves, but it is further back, but it's still a, a good amount of light. And I do have, by the way, structures outside. I constantly feel like I'm repeating this. Outside of the northern and then eastern windows that reflect light back in and there's no overhang. So there's nothing protecting the windows from um, light. On the picture on Argentia, worm castings also use the fish fertilizer. I just, it has been through a nightmare this year so far, so I wanted to give it a little bit of a boost. And then it's in the north facing window, so again, there's structures push, pushing the light back in. And it's also in summer, the sun's tracking north for me, and so what ends up happening is that my northern windows get much more light and my southern windows actually get a little bit more dim. And so the Picturata Argentia, even though it's not getting that direct morning light, is still getting a lot of light. And I found out I cannot cut the flowers off of my plants like I thought. It's just not going to happen. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments about your calathea that have flowered. Have you cut off the blooms or what do you think you did that triggered flowering? Do you want to let your plants flower or are you more concerned about you know, them being foliage plants and you just want them to focus their energy on growing foliage? I'm gonna say the margarita, the, the bloom is so beautiful uh, that I'm gonna, I'm just gonna let this happen. Um, but again, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and until next time, be well and take care. Thank you.